Frequently asked questions include, why am I wearing pink makeup? Stupid ass question gets obvious answer, because it can match my awesome shoes. Ding! Hello everyone, how the hell have you been? It's been a long time since I've done a vlog. Now, I'm living in Stratford with my other half, who kindly just brought me some tea. Well, that's my train of thought gone. I've moved, I'm good, things are on the up. Saw Guardians of the Galaxy, it was amazing. Going to see Doctor Who because it's showing in the cinema here. Things are going very well. Current issue is trying to get a job somewhere. What I found is largely it varies upon where you are. When I lived in Middlesbrough for over a year, solidly I couldn't find work anywhere. There weren't jobs going, simple as. And when there were jobs going, they weren't advertised through the company. They were advertised through third party companies who were recruitment agencies. And because that's what you get linked to all the job seekers websites and from recruitment websites, you never actually get to talk to the company directly. You never get to follow up. You never get to check. You never get to show that you're interested. You just hand in your CV among what can I can only assume is hundreds of other people doing the exact same. Because the number of jobs you have to apply for on job seekers actually varies by where you are as well. When I lived in Middlesbrough, I had to find 14 jobs a week. So naturally everyone's applying all over the goddamn place. And I moved back in with my parents because there wasn't work anywhere, so I could save up for some nearby jobs without having to pay rent and pay off some debts. There was two a week I had to do. Just, just, just two. And it was easy, and there were places with adverts and signs, and it really varies upon where you are. So I'm confident that I'll find something here in Strat. I've already got an interview tomorrow, and I've been here a little over a week. I've applied to a lot of places, though. Which brings to the topic of this video. What are my top five places I would like to work for? Number five clothing shops because I might actually be able to dress fancy and be accepted there. It'd have to be a very funky, open-minded clothing shop. Maybe something kind of weird. I'd like to actually, you know, dress how I'd like. Not this full-on drag level, but maybe get a mohawk. Chic number four. Something in books. I love books. I would love getting a book discount and I would love to be able to read more. Have an incentive to read more god darn things because I get so busy with, with stuff that is both visual and hand using that I, I can only really listen to podcasts badly or music badly so, so I need to get motivation to read stuff before I actually go and read stuff uh, or you know totally lock myself out get offline you know to read anything I'm reading Red Seas Under Red Skies now thank you Fee for sending me that as a present but I've only been reading it on public transport because that's the only time when I can't do anything else and it's a terrible habit I need to break out of because I Fraggin love books. I love sci-fi. I love good well-told YA romance novels I, I love things that use Something grand and fun as a metaphor for something relatable and mundane Three phone shop. I really enjoyed working for O2 again It's very much down to the local manager how to run the store so you get a good rapport with a small number of people You don't need a really big team. The shops aren't usually that big. It's, I really genuinely enjoyed it. Two Argos no, no randomness, no, like, generic branding, but just Argos. I actually really enjoyed working there as a Christmas temp. I could have stayed on. I could have, but I needed to move. I miss it. I miss how really just well-structured working there was. My line managers were all lovely people. They were very compassionate and listening whenever I had a, an issue or if I wanted to talk about anything. And they were intuitive as to if I needed to talk about anything but was trying to hide it. They, they praised people who did well. They tried to help people who didn't do well. They did everything that a good employer needs to do. Make you feel like they want you to succeed. And I wanted to succeed because of that, and I did. I, I, I was really bad at it at first. I was terrible at selling insurance and additional products with things, but I changed my phrasing, I changed my tones, and I learned how to sell, basically, as well as how to like get a good rapport with customers and have a good service. I, I loved it. I loved every minute of it. Really, and I know this sounds so weird to like, because Argos, no one really expects that because it's a massive company. You just take things to the back room, run in the front room, but no, there's this big complex thing going on. There's a lot of targets to meet. It's exciting. It's really exciting. I would, I would love to do that again. <laughs> so weird. Also, the uniforms are all unisex, so I would love to do that again, and I wouldn't feel too bad about it. And number one, 
probably the reason I'm making this video at all. I would love to work in a comic shop. There are many reasons why I would love to, because A, I freaking love comics, I would love to get into them more, I would love to get a staff discount, but into comics, oh my god, oh my god. Everything I know about comic shops is they're run by interesting people, I've never seen one where someone isn't clearly dressed how they would want to dress, no one's in suits or uniforms, I would love to go and maybe get a mohawk dress how the hell I wanted to do, wear like referential clothing and merch and people would get it and I could talk about it and actually gain rapport with people and it would be lovely to chat. I would love to work in the comic shops for all the reasons that you would want to work in a comic shop. Also, I would love to then try and join the Valkyries. The Valkyries are a group of women, about 250 now, who all work in comic shops and chat about comics and discuss comics and have this like network of comic chat going on and it's awesome. It's run by Kate Leth of Kate or Die. She does a lot of artwork for Welcome to Night Vale. She wrote uh, a comic which I'm, I've ordered now and should be here soon. Uh, Seeing Red, Adventure Time, uh, the trade band number three. Uh, she's doing a lot of really cool projects soon. She's doing Fraggle Rock, the comic. She's doing Edward Scissorhands, the comic. I'm so excited and interested. I love her work so much and I would love to, I would love to chat to her about comics and chat to other awesome people about comics and be a Valkyrie. Because I'm loving the female-led comics that are coming out now. I'm loving the, the female-written comics that are coming out now. It's amazing. We've got The Lumberjanes, which I have an order, being Puppycat by Natasha Allegri, which did amazing into Kickstarter. I keep showing it to everyone who's not seen it. I love the animation. I want to see more. I want to see so much more. Babstar's Batgirl redesign it looks fucking amazing. I love Greg Rick's Batwoman. I would love her return to Greg Rick's Batwoman, but he's moved over to Marvel now because DC really effed him over, which is sad. I'm reading comics and having opinions and having high expectations. The tie-in comic for Injustice Gods Among Us, a game I did not like, is actually really good. The bit with Black Canary being pregnant, oh my god, that whole that whole issue is tackled so well. Harley Quinn is ridden well again. Yay! Yes! Currently reading Superman Red Sun on issue two. I love the concept. I'm not so keen on the execution. I'll have to keep going and see one of the difficulties is that I read a lot more Marvel and more independent press and web comics than I do DC. I don't know very much about it, and so there's a lot of references I don't get, like Bizarro and Wilex Luth is just a total dickbag with no purpose in life. It, I, I don't, I'm not fond of it. It's one of those things. Mark Miller is really good at making concepts. The execution wildly varies. I'm gonna have to cut down about 10 minutes of comic chat in this. This, this is how much I would love to work in a comic shop and talk to people about freaking comics. I could probably get away with being all femme if I had a faux domino or dressed like a superhero. Although most of my favourite comics aren't about superheroes, so using the medium as a method to tell stories that aren't about, like, face punching. Because honestly, comics, I found that face punching in comics is actually a terrible medium to do it in. Really, it's animation and film that works for? In comics, it's much more about, like, the passage of time. Well, like, look at Greg Rooker's Batwoman, Batwoman LG. Things he and J.H. Wilding the Thirds managed to do with, like, panels and text boxes and the passage of time just it's such innovation i love it i love it i love it so yeah i got my first interview tomorrow it's not for any of the jobs i just mentioned but i still hope i get it it looks like in the current climate the best thing to do is to get two sets of part-time jobs rather than one full-time i'll probably end up doing a lot more freelance website and graphics design because of it but things are actually going okay on that at the moment as well some potential clients lined up just gotta keep on going just keep on keeping on also, in a random turn of events, I will be at the Galtres Parklands Festival, performing, uh, I think about 15 minutes on one of the stages, uh, in Duncombe, in Duncombe Park, Helmsley, uh, somewhere between the 22nd and 24th of August. It is a three-day theme from Friday to Sunday. I am going to be there and I'm going to be doing some cool stuff. Here's hoping I'm not too rusty.